Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome to another Supreme Commander epic. That's right, it's another long one uh, because, you, well, you keep enjoying them and watching them, so I'll keep making them. It's all very simple. But before we get on with that jazz, let's all take a moment to appreciate just how amazing I am. <laughs> you get through that sentence. What is it? Six for six or seven for seven? Something like that. Correct political predictions made through the medium of shiny metal mayhem uh, on Sopcom. It's absolutely bananas. I don't know what's going on. There will be some of you out there saying, Oh, what are you talking about? They're still counting votes. It's not over. Oh, it's kind of, it's over, guys. Really? Come on. Trumpies, trumpets, trumpers, whatever the correct terminology is. Let's all move on. It's important too. It's good for our health, I think, to be realistic. And uh, there are good things and bad things that are going to come out of it, you know. At least we can all start appreciating that man-made climate change is a real thing again, which is important. It's a shame we're going to have to do that on bended knee to our new Antifa BLM overlords. But hey, it swings and roundabouts. <laughs> but anyway, in the essence of learning new things and moving forward, message coming in from Tagada who very helpfully reminded me that there's a guide, a written guide to understanding the basics of SOCOM. A lot of new people, as we've discussed in previous casts, enjoying this new game, but the learning curve is steep. Let's face it, guys, it is not an easy thing to pick up. So in that vein, there is a handy guide here, which will basically explain the fundamentals, everything from approaching the game right at the beginning through to interactions between resources and all of the steps in between, give you a really good understanding of the basics and there'll be a link to this in the description below this video guys so you can go and check that out at your leisure highly recommend it will give you a really good foundation to understanding the game all right let's get on with today's game and that action will be going down on what is it it will be going down on ivy valley's adaptive exciting stuff might be a new one for Galcast. i'm ready you guys are ready and the players are sure as hell ready let's go on over to the game zone to see how they're going to get on ching ka-ching instant loading it's going to be a good one let's call this team one at the top this team two down at the bottom going first for team one perhaps rear guard air position who knows it's saucy Maximus Triple X. Sounds very rude indeed. Here he is going. UEF in Pontiff White opening first land. Down here in Lime Green, it's Latch Salter or Lack Salter. And he's going Cybrin opening first land to his left. Down here on the front line, it's De Phoenix in baby blue going aeon opening first land team member number four above him amygdala another uef this time in mellow yellow opening first and second land and last but not least up here for team one it's stasic another aeon this time in baby pink opening first and second land let's check out team two down here bottom corner first of all uef it's ray morend in elephantine gray he's going first land to his right over here, we've got General Monty, a Cybran in Cyanide, Cyan opening first air, first one of those today. Team member number three for team two in Halliborange Orange, it's Campion, and he is going Seraphim opening first land. Up here to the top left, it's Luca. Apologies if you can hear my dog. He's very upset about the election results, as you can expect. And uh, he is going UEF in Combat Green opening first land and last but not least for team two and all the players it's robustness going seraphim in ferrari red opening first land so there we have it game quality at 93 percent which is pretty good balance as far as we're concerned and it's an eclectic mix of Joes and Pros here. We've got 1300s down here, a 1300, three 1400s, a 1900. Top rated player is Stasic up there for Team 1. And our two highest rated players for Team 2 here, 1700 and 1800. Uh, they are on the left hand side there of uh, Team 2. So they will be the key players. Basically, these three here, you get those taken out early, might set you up in good stead. And good news, huge thank you as well before we start going out to Hazar, who has updated the Supreme scoreboard. So we have reclaimed totals. La, look, check it out. Check it out. Those reclaimed numbers. Have you ever seen anything quite so big? Well, it's overstating it a little bit, but it's exciting from a caster's perspective. All these guys working behind the scenes to keep Guile cast afloat with all the throat, all with the uh, afloat. Jesus with all of the tools we need 
to bring the information to you as we see it. So reclaim totals there, very exciting stuff. And he's adjusted the counter, so it actually shows the sim speed there next to it, and the counter moves, the slider moves as well. But we'll keep that at zero for now because nothing crazy is happening. Let's check out what's been going on while I've been waffling. We've got De Phoenix in the center with his com, who incidentally was leading the reclaim figures, and he still is there at 1.6k, everybody else sub 1,000. Amygdala coming to join him in the center. Stasic just leaving his base now with his commander, sat back, kept the uh, com in the base for a little bit of extra time there to get himself established, keep the extra build power in the base. Robustness pulling his comm now, moving out to the bottom right-hand corner. We do already have an engineer here from Team 1, that's from Latch Salter, and he's busy reclaiming something there on the bottom, something of great value, it would seem. It's taking a long old time for him to hoover all of that up, and that's already bumped him up to 1.3k. Get back to generated totals, though, so it's generally more helpful over the course. And uh, what's happening on Team 2 is starting to get their comms moving out. Luke has pulled his comm up here to assist with the production of a naval factory. And uh, Campion pulled his comm out to hoover up a couple of engineers there that were on board a wreck. And I'm pretty sure that was an airlift, of a, uh, a courier that got shot down coming out from Raymarend. I saw one circling a little bit earlier while I was chatting away. T1 bomber in over the top there from Maximus. Drops his payload on an unsuspecting mechs. And he's going to get a second bomb away as well. So that should be the end of that mass extractor. And that's with circling interceptors from Raymaren trying to shoot him down. Robustness pulls his comm out of the water and across the beach. And presumably was responsible for gunning down that engineer. Which was scooping up the mass there for Latch Salter. Who's pulled his comm away from the base and is uh, working on T1 sub-production. One engineer here working on more naval yards. There'll be four or five of them in total should he get all of those sorted. Bit of floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty, cutting the edge off the bay there from De Phoenix, bringing those auroras over to assault that naval yard for robustness. Actually not focusing down on the naval yard at all, but going after... Do you know what? I don't know what they're going after. It looks like they're going after the actual frigate itself. Yeah, there it is. Looked like they were hitting nothing but water for a while. And they finally stalled production there. And De Phoenix bringing his commander out to assist... And if they can shut down production of these naval yards and kill those off, might give Latch Salter a free run to cordon robustness in or separate his comm away from the main base. But we've got a drop there as well from General Monty, who's also going to assist with taking the bottom right landmass. What's going on over here? Stasic and Luca getting into it. And Stasic, remember, really is by quite a long way, the top-rated player on Team 1, and he's taken a bit of a battering to that UEF com. It's 3,600 HP versus 8,500 from Luca. Stasic wisely dipping away back into the ocean. The trouble is, is that there's already a Tiger Shark there belonging to Luca, which is now also harassing the commander. So far be it from him being safe. He's actually still taking damage now under the waters. And that Tiger Shark will continue to harass. He cannot do anything about it. He cannot tank that damage. He's going to have to try and find a way to get back out on shore and get safe. He's got a lot of backup coming. But he's into the red and he's not going to have a lot of hit points left on him to combat Lucas Com, who's going to get out of the water with him. This is a bad situation for him now. We'll check back in on that in just a second. Campion over here getting to it with Amygdala. Trying to battle down some of his spam. Stasic now out of the water. Luca bringing his comm out of the water as well. Going after the Auroras at first. Will he switch up onto the comm though? Yes, he will. T1 bombers over the top as well for Luca. And that was a control K. That was a controlled demolition. 
from Stasic, who was going to try and take Luca with him, I think, but didn't work out. He knew he was in trouble either way. Com Explosion did take out the Tiger Shark, which was still lurking there. That was beautiful work from Luca. So the highest rated player on Team 1 eliminated. Unfortunately, full share seems to be on. So somewhere a fairy has perished from terminal hemorrhoids. Always sad when that happens. But now it's Campion in trouble. The Phoenix bearing down on him into the red sub 1000 hit points now to phoenix with no signs of letting up and why would he because he has got the kill down and out finishes it with an overcharge beautiful stuff so it is now one scalp a piece but uh, definitely team two will be happy with that exchange a 1300 for a 1900 and that is going nicely and if you check out amygdala who has inherited all of the infrastructure there from Stazic is yet to do anything with it whatsoever. In fact, he's now donated the main base portion, part of it, over to Maximus up at the back, but is still yet to issue an order to any of the Auroras over here. And that will give Luca a chance to expand, potentially. Gun upgrade on the way for him. 7,200 hit points on the com. 22% done on the upgrade. De Phoenix, who took a bit of a battering in that exchange, is going to pull back, as is Amygdala. But at least they managed to claw back a player kill out of that one. Drop inbound, though, from General Monty. He set up a couple of buildings down there at the bottom right one land factory offload onto the ground one gets shot down though six mantis make it down another two mantis two medusa and a sky slammer make it down and they are now heading in towards the main base engineers beware t2 mechs likely to get taken down here and another one over here potentially especially with the medusas in tow Engineers trying to get a point defense online would be great move to start expanding in towards the main base. They need one Medusa shell to land, but it's too late. The Eruptor will complete. And that will be the end of that little push, or will it? Yeah, the Eruptor just survives thanks to a little bit of repair assistance. Oh, and Latch Salt has pulled his comm down to help defend as well, but beautiful little drop there from General Monty. Meanwhile, back over here, Luca moving up with his commander, and we've got some T2 progression from Amygdala, whose mongoose is just taking the opportunity to fire some of their long-range volleys at Luca's spam. And finally, we're starting to take on some sort of cohesion here. Some front lines forming. And what is important is that Robustness only has one operational naval yard and is busy repping that up because that's taken damage. So for the time being, that bottom waterway in Team 1's hands, and actually the top one looking like it's in their hands as well. Amid amygdala utilizing that one naval yard from Stasic that he inherited and has pushed with frigates all the way down and killed off the naval yard belonging to Luca. So they might have eliminated the player, but with full share on, the task hasn't automatically become easy up in the north. Amygdala filling in well, considering. Overcharge away, deals with the mongoose, very nicely done. Gunning down the T1 PD, finishing that with an overcharge. But now we've got a lot of T1 spam pouring out of Stasic's old base, now belonging to Maximus, and just hugging the beach line now. Potentially could be causing problems for Luca. Luca is pushing northwards with his calm and a bunch of pillars. And he's got a parashield now as well, which is no bad thing considering his calm sitting on about 70% health. 
12 minutes in, starting to get to that point with some T2 air on the field where your com could be surprised if you're overextended. T2 torpedo bombers circling overhead here from Team 2, trying to gun down, or torp down rather, engineers and frigates. Engineers hurriedly getting some traces online for a little bit of anti-air coverage. Check it out though, a leaky front line for Amygdala, who sat back here trying to get some T2 power up and running, but has now got Lobo spam entering the base. Some pillars just about managing to seal the gap. But Luca up here continuing to press. T2 Air HQ down and out up on the front line. And Luca with a lot of T2 ground units. And some of that Aurora spam from Maximus we saw hugging the beach earlier has gone right around the waterways and is threatening. Luca in the backfield. The General Monty quick with his Corsairs, his fighter bombers, and engineers on the ground hurriedly building fortifications. There's no way in for a little band of tinfoil auroras. They are toast. And those Corsairs will switch up and go after those beacon frigates of amygdalas. That will be the end of those. So, checking in on the eco side of things. Seems to be about a 50 60 mass advantage here and there for Team 2, who are firmly in control of the bottom right. Team 1 do have the land mass at the top left mostly but have some problems on the front line. Team 2 pressing their beefy advantage, out-muscling some of this tinfoil Aeon business. Amygdala pushes north with some T2 spam. Luca's going to back up with his comms. Got another power shield inbound. And that's going to feel pretty good. Naval HQ taken out of commission, finishes off whatever it was being built, likely a destroyer. Surely stick around at finishing that off, and yes, he's going to. That's now a five star commander with 114 kills. Luca getting work done on the ground. And uh, Campignon, Campion, he won't, wanting to put a G in there and pretend it's French. Campion, his stuff was all passed over to Raymarend, who is now in full on ASF production mode, air superiority fighters for air dominance. But this is going to surely prove significant. You would imagine the hold on the bottom right for Team 1 looking tenuous now that Latch Salter seems in pretty solid control of this waterway, isolating this bottom right-hand corner from the main landmass. There's three T2 Mexes here for robustness. Desperately we want to be hanging on to those. That cruiser with its epic range. Picking off structures at the front of Robustness's base. The Phoenix, 5,300 HP on his comp. Just sat idly under shield at the front of his base. Getting some regen on. And speaking of regen, nano repair upgrade on the way for Luca. 
who obviously wants to continue using his commander. He's got the Zephan gun upgrade, the range and damage. Now he's going to add a little bit of tankiness to that commander. Does still need to be careful though. Early game more or less over. Nearly at 20 minutes. Now a large zooey mass of floaty BS moving out from Raymerend into the bay. Perhaps trying to put a bit of a smack down on Latch Salter. He's got a similar bit of pressure coming out from the south as well from Robustness along with the single frigate from that naval yard. Time being still in control of three T2 mexes. But there is an engineer here from Latch Salter who's managed to snag one of them. She's sorry, there's two of them. Two engineers and two mexes. I wonder how long before we see the emergence of some factories there from him. Air war kicking off over the top of Latch Salter's vessels. Torpedo bombers out from robustness. Probably getting shot down. A couple of Maximus's ASF stray unwisely into the airspace of Robustness's base, just where Raymarin's own air force is lurking. Not the best place to park your planes. Lovely view, but definitely unsafe. going on the front line. Luca completed the nano upgrades and a Percy or two up front or in fact Percy or four for Amygdala. That's a dramatic increase in ground-based firepower. Attack missile launcher batteries on the front line for Luca. Wondering if we're going to see some of this punching power diverted from Amygdala to push deeper into Team 2's territory. But the presence of Luca right in the middle disturbing him far too much to redirect energies southwards. Instead wants to get rid of this UEF comm or at least push him back like a taxing proposition at best right now. Luca with 20,000 hit points on board that com. And with no signs of stopping, just plowing forward up the coast. Span continuing to file out of Maximus's forward base, but Only firepower that will cause Luca to worry is from the south, and that is those aforementioned Percy's from Migdala. They really can't put out the damage. We'll want to shelter them from potential overcharge. Luca needing to be careful here, taking a lot of damage. Only takes a few shots, but he's got some Percy's of his own arriving. Also, an overcharge. Or two will help the medicine go down, but actually Amygdala has Luca on the run here. Luca down to 6,900 hit points. Now they're strafing into point defense fire over here. This is where you want one of your buddies to come in with a whole load of fighter bombers and pick off the comm, but it doesn't look like that's about to happen. Battle in the bay in the south. Broadsword gunships for Raymerend. Fending off some of those frigates and still that T1 naval yard for robustness is operational. We've got a new one 
for General Monty. He had two more, potentially three over here. They've all been taken out, so a nearly completely successful raid from Team 1 on that Bay Area, but they still can't seal Team 2 out of that channel. That forward base now in pieces. One TML remaining. And that's partly why couple of demolishers under parashield coverage just lobbing artillery fire in at that position and check it out 23 minutes and we have experimental activity a GC rolling in from De Phoenix in behind what was the forward position from Luca. Luca dropping back under the safety of the waves over here. Let's see your own prediction skills. Time stamp it. Tell us who's going to win and then reply to your own comment at the end with either I'm like Guile if you're right, or I wish I was like Guile if you're wrong. <laughs> I told you it was going to be unbearable to live with. Nuka will have to pray now that he's got enough shielding from a ground fire attack from that Colossus who seems to know exactly where that commander is. That's the view from De Phoenix. Unfortunately, he can't squash him by stepping on him. Another experimental completed from De Phoenix. It's another GC back at base. <laughs> Luca starting a reclaim on the Colossus. It's a very slow process. That GC not going to hang around for it. He's turning. Are we going to try and see a ground fire attempt? Yes, we are. I'm not sure that that's shallow enough for that to work. Luca doesn't seem to be receiving any damage from that beam's AoE. Nope. Just enough aquatic shielding. To Phoenix. Fully consumed by his ground fire. <laughs> <laughs> over here yet to issue orders to his next Colossus oh but look a bunch of Percivals has shown up and now in Ravager range over here and Luca wanting to add overcharge to injury pulls his com out and finishes the Colossus off thank you for the mass dump he says there were a few Percy's from Amygdala following in tow, but now they find themselves outnumbered and unlikely, I suppose, to all make it home in one piece. Check out the front of Robustness's base. It's looking anything but. In fact, he's actually handed some of his structures over. In fact, we've had a mass gifting over so General Monty has given all of his stuff over to Raymerend. Robustness has his comm over here. But Robustness is, is looking pretty much like he's in a corner that he can't get out of. Broadsword's dispatched to try and deal with the naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie. Dirty Cybron. Boats, sprouting legs. He does manage to complete an Ethota, though. Will that help him 
push these vessels out of range. Ooh, and a Tempest under construction just started there for De Phoenix on the other side of the bay. But this is pretty interesting. General Monty, he's still issuing orders to his comm. But it's essentially a player down. For Team 2. Those of you out there who just typed your predictions suddenly wishing you hadn't. No editing, remember. If your comment shows up as edited, we're all allowed to call you a massive liar. <laughs> cancelled for the Phoenix. Latch Salter completes an experimental. Spider-Bot moving out. Two more queued up behind. And here we have the Ithota. So it made its way across the bay and is now bearing down on the main base of the Phoenix. The Phoenix has his earlier constructed GC now moving in behind it not actually an awful lot of infrastructure here for him to take out. He is in range, fortunately for him, with that Colossus. Oh, he's just drifted out of it, though. Wondering, is the Ithota actually quicker? But now he isn't as the Spider-Bot turns up, and that will be a good bit of double teaming. Oh, triple teaming, in fact, from a couple of strats brought in over the top. Broadswords were brought in to help but instead will just get themselves gunned down. Robustness transferring units over to Luca this time. Wondering if he sees himself as down and out. Another Ithota under construction. And there it is. I thought he might be going that way. You start to see all the units being transferred over. They're going to be gifted over anyway, but uh, all the ones that hadn't been given over sent to Raymarend, the player with the highest score. I think that's how it it works out. And I'm wondering if General Monty's going to bow out too. Raymarend effectively was more or less out of it. I don't know what General Monty's excuse was. There it is. Yeah. So it is now a 2v4. But remember, all of this infrastructure is in the hands of the two highest rated players on Team 2. And Team 1 lost their top pro in Stasic early doors. But still, I'd suggest potentially an uphill climb for Team 2. Control of the bottom right hand landmass now firmly with Team 1. That has transferred over. Luca does have a position in the corner of the top left landmass, but that is being bombarded now by governors. Engineers have TMD up. The last engineer is out of commission. And we've now got some Lobos coming in from the north as well. So that's going to be in Team 1's hands most likely also. Colossus with one kill to his name. That was the Ithota that he saved his main base from. He's now pushing deep into what was Robustness's old base. Plenty of broadswords lurking, though, in this part of the map. For Team 2, Raymarend on it. Just look at the hit points tumbling off it. And from that elevation, the uh, asylums provide very little coverage and he's not going to make it back to the water either. So that'll be another dead colossus, this time on the lower beach. Team 1 continuing to apply pressure though as Amygdala presses forward with his Percivals. I don't think he's going to get much traction here. They can't get through this air coverage. 
That's why you always want to have air superiority before you launch an invasion. Even Hitler knew that. Didn't know a lot else, but he knew that. And a fat boy out for Luca, looking to pound Team One's front line from range. A couple of forward Percivals for Team One lurking near those hillocks in the centre of the field. Now that fatty's free to commence softening up protocols or is he as those ambassadors out from Maximus take out the shield gem but there's a lot of flack what they really need team one sorry team two is some mobile t3 anti-air but three more Athenas turn up to cover that fat boy Latshalter turns up with a Monkey Lord, but that's getting peppered at range now by the Fatty. Another round of strap bomb attacks. A lot of planes falling from the sky. And the Fat Boy does get dealt with. So we're not getting an awful amount of penetration here from any of these experimentals. This one might serve better. Sneaky little monkey lord around the houses from Latsalter. All of the naval yards from Team 2 are down and out in that bottom channel now. Oh! But look at that! Broadsword attack over the middle catches Maximus unaware. <gasps> no! Raymarend picks off Amygdala. Double kill right in the center and suddenly it's a 2v2. Everything gets transferred over to Latch Salter. He's going to have to divvy some of that up but that is enormous. Amazing play there from Raymarend. We saw that ever-building mass of broadswords in the center. But they pushed up. And grabbed both comms out in the open in right in the center of Team One's territory. 34 minutes. And now this is a hugely even a fair dare I say it team one potentially just went behind they are way up on eco like massively so two to one in fact saving grace being that that monkey lord we were so consumed with just pulverized the remains of General Monty's base it's getting his comeuppance now from defending broadswords and that will keep the main base back here of Raymaren safe unreal apologies for the miss there up over here always a lot going on but that is a thing of beauty right up through the middle at a clutch moment Luca stations his commander in the pond just south of his main base. And now we've got a, a Tsar on the field shadowing another couple of monkey lords. This game is properly in the late phase now. Experimentals popping up all over the place. Just about to say how long till we saw the emergence of some artillery. Well, there is the first one that we've seen under construction. Emissary Aeon Heavy Artillery from De Phoenix. Quantum Gateway back 
for Luca. Another fat boy under construction. Order of business for Raymond is continue with air production, who has been an absolute saviour for a team two with his broadswords. Percival's helping to defend the fat boy. One monkey lord down. Second one in trouble. Fat boy defended once again. Broadswords bringing the extra damage required. SF production in full swing on both sides of the map. But this is looking solid down here now for Team 1. It's 1.1k to 687 generated eco. The longer that goes on, the more it swings in favour of Team 1. Look what's going on here. Aeon missile ship torrent complete. Another one in production. We already have governors out from Latch Salter's T2 UEF factory. So it's missile heavy bombardment time for the northern shore. For Luca. Latch Salter's priority should be now to work out how to defend these vessels from these roaming broadsword death balls. Nothing more scary than a good old fashioned death ball. Emissary. 6,200 HP out of 12,000. That's going to open up a new issue for Team 2. 38 and 3 quarter minutes gone. But my oh my, how the mass totals have equalized. Team 1 at about 1.3k, Team 2 about the same. Team 1 with the advantage overall in total mass, but that's not necessarily that much of a factor. And one missile ship down to the Fat Boy. Second one under fire along with escort vessels. Fat Boy well defended. Vulnerable to air attack potentially. Latch Salter trying to trade with it, which is never going to work out well. Aircraft carrier. It's potentially how he was going to defend against those broadswords or assist with it. It's more air production. But it doesn't look like that's going to live very long. Siege tanks rolling out with sniper bots. Now two fat boys on that coast. A fresh one just turning up. But a Tsar shows up as well for De Phoenix. De Phoenix who has inherited the airbase of Maximus. Of course these siege tanks have torpedoes remember. Underwater and still dishing out the hurt. One torrent down again. Another one completes. Rolling past, dishing out damage underwater, and they're now back on the ground. T3 mechs taken out. But Fatboy caught by the Tsar, trying to make it back to the water. 
Tsar for a moment turned off its primary weapon before going, oops, <laughs> turning it back on again. And massive amounts of storks, the torpedo bombers from Lachshalter going after the fat boy. And I think they might get it, you know. Luka getting a little bit too aggressive there. Unable to defend. Is the tide turning air-wise? A lot of ASFs on the field for Team 1. De Phoenix with a solid amount over here. 85. Latch Salter with 25. So we're well up over 100 for Team 1. Raymerend. At 36, and I don't see any major commitment at all from Luca on the ASF side of things. He is going mass eco now. Lots of fusion generators going up at the back. Kennels assisting the quantum gateway, getting in more RAS preset support commanders for extra eco boost. The newer players out there. ACUs and support commanders all generate their own little microclimate of eco. Can't see it there because they're building something, so it's showing up as minus 15. Find an idling ACU. There's an idling ACU. So each. RAS preset ace, S, uh, support commander SACU sorry putting out 11 mass the great thing about that they're tough they're mobile they can do damage you can move them about the place so you can keep your economy mobile once you have lots of them makes you much harder force to deal with in the late game you can conceal them places shelter them away from things like that. Disrupt a T3 heavy artillery operational for Latch Salter. Emissary still not there surprisingly enough. And it might never get there as uh, Lithota turns up. The Tsar is on him. Remember of course there's the electrical storm post death. Oh and Lithota gets his first rank in veterancy. Oh, it's actually the second emissary, so the first one is up, but that first one's about to go down. Surely it does survive the initial attacks from the Ithota, but when that gets destroyed, its full damage takes it out. And now, of course, the electrical storm's going to cause havoc everywhere else, shielding, defending a lot of it initially. Oh, but with the destruction of the power generator subsequent explosion takes out a lot of the engineers quantum gateway back here for Raymerend getting a lot of assistance as well got some nuke defense but you can see how the shields are starting to be taxed by this artillery now he'll be happy to have dealt with one of the pieces in the center but the one back here for latch salt are very well defended indeed Center still looking very much like a stalemate. Most of the ground forces under the control of Luca. A few Salems have made landfall over here, causing problems. Bag themselves at T3 mechs. Engineers hurriedly trying to finish a clink hammer. do with some broadswords right about now but broadsword production seems to have fallen off somewhat just switched up to it 
pulled the rover drones away to assist the air factory to try and shut this down. And finally, they start to show up along with a siege tank or two. That will be the end of that little assault down here. Another monkey lord on the run from a fat boy. Interesting. So this was looking like a hardy little installation a moment ago. We had support commanders building up land factories. But Latch Salter says no, brings in five bricks and starts dismantling the operation. And the torrents that were suffering badly by that last bit of fat boy pressure from Luca now redirecting. a whole new set of problems for Luca. He's already got the defense prepared though. Lots of buzz kills up and running. Many more under construction or will be soon once he got he gets his bank of uh, triads completed. Both teams struggling now to find gaps in each other's defenses. see a lot of people looking at these epics and say saying well it's impossible to get anything done with conventional units these games always end up in artillery spam or nuke spam or various other standoff tactics it actually has to be said these games are the rarities most games finish long before now as one team crumbles. And those bricks having finished their mission over here, cross the channel. And now heading in here. There's a lot of triads though. And a lot of broadswords. So Raymarend replenishing his stock that's enough to force the bricks to turn around and they're like ah, let's finish off this T3 mechs instead definitely a sensible idea there wowzers look at that tack missile battery it's already fired a few volleys by the looks of things by the looks of what's going on over here potentially had some success so emissary rebuilt over here so is it still two pieces I think it's still two pieces there's a third under construction right at the back that's an awful lot of artillery to be coming your way when you've got nothing firing back can feel exhausting, but they are working on their own artillery pieces. There's a Duke under construction with solid shielding around it. For Luca. Ray Moren defending his comm against potential Cybrin teletrickery. Telethuggery, whatever you want to term it. Getting lots of T1 point defense around it. Once again, vessels coming under Fat Boy fire. Another torrent sailing very ill advisedly directly into it. He won't be making it back to the docks to sample the dock boys. Monkey Lord up front for Team 1. 
just can't advance directly. It's all about strafing tactics right now. Megalith stomping his way into the waters. Torpedoes whittling down some of these Percy's. Probably wants to take down the siege tanks that are returning fire first of all. How's the shielding holding up in the bottom left hand corner? Answers pretty well. Rover drones assisting shield upgrades. They transform from T2 to T3. Another round of strat bombers out somewhere. There's quite a few strats over here. Ambassadors trying to finish off another fat boy. Oof, down to 1300 HP. One more bomb will do it. Interestingly, the, that uh, fat boys managed to kill off that naval yard that was producing those missile ships. That Tsar now has 162 kills, utilized mainly, I think, as a long-range ASF pick-off sniper unit, but every now and again we'll move in and Just melt a fat boy like so. So it's another two fat boys gone. Luca brings them out, gets work done, but can't keep them safe. Now another air fracker over the front line. There's so much ground to air capabilities, though. Lots and lots of Sams. Not the place you want to have an air fight. Monkey Lord shows up on the beach. Gets its face wiped by that broadsword pack. It's an interesting map. It really does lend itself to longer games, I think. And that duke is nearly complete. Just about managing to keep up with... The shield defense. He's actually only got one engineer working on the Duke, or did for a moment. He's dispatched a few more onto it now. And we've got an operational Novax. In fact, we've got two. One for De Phoenix, one for Latch Salter, another one on the way for De Phoenix. Battleships turning up in the bottom channel now. Interestingly, though, won't have that much of an impact on the game because of the the way the cliffs are shaped. You can get in here and cause problems with this. Maybe cause problems in here from the bay. But otherwise, it's no easy task. Now the Duke is complete, but can they keep it alive now that there are Novak sat satellites in the equation? There's a lot of artillery shells falling on this shielded back section covering the Duke. And another Duke down here, this time for Raymerend. That's getting a lot of build power assigned to it. These rover drones. Useful pieces of kit. I'm surprised they're not putting absolutely everything on the Duke. Going for the easier option of whittling down exposed targets. Going after Lucas Com, excuse me, and he nearly got it. Artillery shells landing there too. Luca has to bring his Com under shield coverage. Is he going to leave it close to the water or is he going to get it right in 
deep into the shields. Well, that really is throwing your lot in with this particular group of shields. But what else can he do? If he's taking fire down here, which he clearly was. Lots of Ithotas now being produced as Luca switches it up. Fat boys will only get you so far. Rolls in with a few Percivals. Manages to take down a Volcano on the front line. Remember, he's got these TAC missile batteries up here. Haven't actually caught a single volley of those yet. Oh, I thought for a minute it had gone down, but no. Bright flashes of light as the artillery shells impact on the shields. Huge amounts of experimentals in this game. 55 minutes gone. Both of these guys, or sorry, both of these teams not far apart in eco terms. And a little bit of fight back in the bottom channel as well from Raymarend, who's got a T2 naval yard up. That's upgrading from T3, about 50% done there. One lone destroyer just tickling away at some of the defences and a, and a mechs down here. Now we've got two satellites and artillery trying to beat that section of shielding. Interestingly, actually, they're getting some work done, Team 2, with theirs. We've got these poxy Cybran shields, which of course need upgrading every time. This is not a well-shielded operation down here. This could be very bad for Team 1 if they lose this exchange. They breach the shield in the bottom corner. Look at the massive transport production that's gone in to try and interrupt some of the beams from the satellites. Try and take the edge off. <laughs> Try and take the edge off. The damage being applied to the shields. On the mini map, you can see the experimental play going down. A couple of fat boys versus that megalith and a GC just around the other side of the hill. Yet another Novax about to complete 8,800 out of 9,000 hit points. That's going to be five Novax satellites in play. That's a lot of damage, potentially. Where are the, the blue ones? That's what I want to know. We've got, I can see, three of Latch Salters. Hiding somewhere in the north? No, it doesn't appear to be. Ouch. They decided now that they can't break that shielding. They're going to switch it up and go after stuff they can break, and there's a lot of that. There's one of the defense satellites coming over. And the Tsar as well there chasing the Ithota of Luca. Another couple of fat boys in the middle trying to take out a Colossus near the northern channel belonging to Latchsalter. I think he's going to get that underwater to safety though. And Latchsalter having lost that Aeon T3. Naval Yard upgraded the UEF one behind it and is now producing summits out of that. So that is interesting. The northern channel much less well defended by cliffs than the southern approach. 
And that can cause lots of issues here trying to defend this base for Luca. Now we're starting to get some more solid shielding for Team 1. It's like that most northerly defense satellite station, that Novak Center, took a bit of damage. They got Raymarin though, as shields collapse over the top of his comm. He has Continentals and other transports trying to defend him. He's going for deeper shield coverage. Oh my goodness. Even if he can keep his comm safe, his base is going to be in bits. Raymarin struggling. To keep his commander safe into the yellow with 8,300 hit points to spare. Shields start to blink back on. Desperately needs to increase the shielding. He's now got two dukes at the front of his base. So that might explain why some of these shells are getting through now. We've got a win for team two. Raymaren successfully defends his comm. For the time being at least. And now some of those Duke shells are starting to penetrate through. Two disruptors here still operational. But shielding around them failing and around the Novaks. Which are causing so many headaches at the moment for Team 2. And the shielding is down. A couple more shells in the right places. And this will suddenly start to look like a very different game. Bosh. One disruptor down. The other one with 3,000 hit points. All of the Novak sensors looking vulnerable. This is cataclysmic for Team 1, who have been ahead in the standoff operation since it started. First to get operational artillery. He's getting work done with these Novak satellites. Looked like they were about to get a com kill on Raymarend. Who's still in the yellow. Despite having... Actually he doesn't. I thought for a minute he had a... Uh, a nano repair. He's got personal shield. That one disruptor in the south. Unshielded. Somehow still alive. As are the Novak centers. But another one has gone down. Three remain. Shield defending that southern disruptor blinks back on. They've got to take out these defense satellites. Really should be. Experimental dis satellites as they're uh, as they're named. There's nothing defensive about them. Raymer end. Looking like the danger might have passed. Just can't seem to land a shell on top of that disruptor. Team 1 down to one artillery piece team two on three Strategic launch detected oh wow who's that out from that's out from team one from de phoenix have they picked off they must have picked off a strategic missile defense and this could be crucial are they about to take out raymarend we'll see in just a minute Shielding's not going to defend him against this. And it's going to land. Boom! The Phoenix scalps. Raymaren leaving Luca all by his lonesome. And just, just as that happens, they take out the Southern Disruptor. And all of the Novaxes have gone. Can you believe it? So suddenly, 
We're again looking at a different game. It's a 2v1, but an 1800 versus a 14 and a 1300. Team 2 down by about 200 mass per tick. Generated eco, but have an operational T3 artillery piece. The two down here from Ray Rend went up with the comm in that nuke. But they're about two thirds, in between two thirds and three quarters done on another one up here. Luca. And it really has been about the standoff tactics. One hour and four minutes and all of the pressure on the mainland seems to have gone now. The Phoenix has been stockpiling ambassadors, so we've got a lot of strap bombs up here. There's a lot, actually. And now they're down to just one opponent. They could potentially start looking for a snipe. Luca is under the most amount of shielding that any comm has ever been under. <laughs> in the history of Sopcom. That is an outrageous amounts of shielding. So you can see why he's not rushing in with those strats right now. <clears throat> Absolutely redonkulous amounts of shield coverage. And what a different game this looks like now with the elimination of virtually all standoff offensive weaponry for team one with the exception of this piece which I missed <laughs> there is an operational emissary here for Latch Salter and of course that nuke launcher which came out from De Phoenix but has it been taken out subsequently this is the area that the artillery shells are landing in so it might already have been taken out GC parked in the top channel there. Another one moving up. Summit's not getting too heavily involved. Just happy to pick off exposed defensive emplacements. And another monkey lord attempting to breach in through the south from Latch Salter. It's going to run into a couple of sub hunters, so we'll take some damage trying to get to the beach. Finally, get a chance to focus in on a tack missile volley. I love it when they come in like a line like that. Pulls out Nithota to assault at the same time. Wants to try and take down some of the shielding. He's going to manage that. What's he going after? Is he going to pick off the emissary? Doesn't need to worry about it. The artillery dealt with that nicely. The Nithota doesn't make it to the main base. So Duke's back here, heavily shielded, getting work done. Those broadswords, such a feature of Ray Moren's game plan in this game. Now getting things done for Luca. Those sub hunters over here have fallen foul of something. A couple of strategic missile submarines over here. <clears throat> we have another GC. A little bit of a GC parking lot emerging. That's going to come and sit with the others. That's interesting. And another one just completed back here. There's a potential route in here. What have we got on the ground to defend? 
line of triads. No ravagers really that I can see. Wouldn't take him too long to get some up with all of the build capacity that he's got in here. That's if he recognises the threat before it's too late. Lots of Colossus started but not finished. Ah, oh, look at the air production facilities up at the back for Team 1. The longer this goes on, the more it drifts in Luca's favour. They've got to find a way to pick him off or to mute these artillery pieces, of which there are now three under this vast swathe of shield generators. One hour, nine minutes gone. Still all to play for. Another GC that we saw completed now moving out for Latch Salter. Assuming he gets it to here to join the others, we'll be looking at four ready to go. That's a lot. In fact, there's another one here as well, so potentially five if he can get it there. That's the view from Luca. He can see the vessels. He cannot see the GCs. Largely or likely completely unaware of the threat that's lurking beneath the water and that is just how you want it if you latch salter five GC's that's a hell of a lot of tank and damage I don't know if he manages to get those in I don't know how he's going to keep those out he might un potentially underestimate what he's got there and how much penetration he'd get. He could make the mistake of pushing in this way, but you would imagine with an investment in an attack like that, he would scout it well. Attack missile volley, finishing off a summit. Absolutely crucial. He doesn't alert Luca too early he might notice that that's one of the GC's heading into the water that could potentially prompt a response but then he's got other things to concern himself now there's another Novax that's turned up rebuilt over here that might well draw the fire of the artillery once again Three hundred and thirty now. Three hundred and thirty kills for that Tsar. That is disgusting. And the GCs are on the move. Unfortunately, one of them has walked out onto the beach. Taking the shortest route. That is the look from Luca, who now has a sonar signature on those. And if if he's being sensible, he might think, uh, crap. <laughs> and they are coming down that back channel. Where is Lucas Com? It's way down here. There's not a lot of defense. You've got this long line of T2PD, which against normal conventional weaponry would fare quite well, but he wish right now he had a huge bank of ravages, which he's just started. T3 point defense going up rapidly as the GC scale the beach. The broadswords dispatched to intercept, going for that lead one on the left. Hit points rapidly depleting on said Colossus. Sub 40,000 now, but there's four other Colossuses to contend with. The fat boy over here lobbing shells in over that bank of mountains. In come the ASFs from De Phoenix trying to chop down that broadsword defense, which they do so in quick measure. Lucas Com back over here, now on the move. 
moving in a southeasterly direction. Shield starting to fail. Quantum Gateway down and out. First of those Dukes soon to go down, no doubt. Solid air coverage from Team 1. Sweeping the area, keeping any broadswords away from the Colossus. Still four operational experimentals. Luca in the water. He's pulled his support commanders to intercept. And in come Percival's from the front line. One of them, one of the Tsars getting shot down, but two more coming in behind. They are now almost over the top of Luca's com. Will their beam be enough to ground fire the commander? They've got torpedoes, remember. This is an absolute evisceration. And Lucas Com is targetable. And down he goes at 1 hour 13 minutes. That is a stunning assault from Team 1. And just when we were saying things don't get done on the ground when it progresses to standoff tactics. Well, that was getting things done on the ground. Latch Salter with the clutch Colossus assault down the back, flushing Luca out into the pond, and then Zars brought in over the top. And the 1300 and the 1400 take out the 1800 and the 1700. That solid, solid play. A win for the Joes. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Befitting, of course, a win for the Joes. <laughs> Oh, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you fancy some more and don't want to have to wait until the next cast and you've seen everything else, why not consider uh, donating on Patreon? There are uh, something in the region of 10 casts already. There'll be another one up this week, so check that out. Uh, and it's a dollar a month, guys. What is that? It's a chocolate bar or a candy bar. Or however it is that you like to say it, it's nothing. So get involved, come join us, come catch out the fun, don't miss out. But until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.